Hey everybody, John from Movie Burners here, and today I'm going to be doing a little review on Blade Runner 2049, of course the Denny Villeneuve film, which has been decried by many a casual viewer as being too slow, too long, uh, boring, and some have even said it's overcomplicated. And you know, I disagree on all accounts really, I think it's a perfectly paced film, which if anything is perhaps a tad too short for everything that tries to cram in, and it's very intellectually satisfying, and if you've seen the original then the themes it explores are not really that complicated at all, indeed many of the broader themes explored in the film are carried over from the original, uh, for example consciousness, what it means to be human, mortality and even morality as well. Um, the film itself takes place 30 years after the 1983 original and whilst things have definitely changed in this iteration, it's still very much a dystopian futuristic setting and it's still in San Francisco. And the world is frankly in a horrendous state when the film opens. There's been mass animal extinction, climate change has really took hold, and it all feels oddly familiar in a strange way. Um, Jared Leto's character Neander Wallace has taken over from Tyrell as a sort of kingpin of replicant manufacturing, and uh, he's something of a false messiah, claiming to have cured world hunger, but in reality when you delve down he's really a cruel and evil being, with a vision that um, ultimately sees humanity being replaced by replicants, but there's just one problem with that, and that is that Despite his attempts to craft a race of slave replicants, he's never been able to crack the ability to reproduce. And actually with the film kind of a kicks off the basic pretense of the story as well. Um, the film for the most part follows Ryan Gosling's Blade Runner who is called Kay and he is really tasked with retiring the child of Rachel and Deckard when they discover Rachel's remains and evidence of a successful pregnancy via caesarean section. Now it's necessary use of the Wallace records to really help him track down the child. It draws the attention of Wallace's dangerous sidekick, Love. And uh, it's fair to say the consequences of this discovery, should it get out, would have the potential to throw the world into utter chaos, uh, with Wallace as I mentioned before really desperate to discover the technology um, and also the lines of humanity and replicants and body never more would open up a can of worms. So off Kay goes under the permanent scrutiny of his boss Lieutenant Joshi and uh, we see him continually returning to have baseline tests throughout the film. Now make no mistake as I say it's Blade Runner 2049 is Ryan Gosling's film for the overwhelming majority of the running time. Um, he really grapples with, with the same existential questions that Deckard and even Rachel faced in the original. Um, he's haunted with the discovery of a seemingly implanted memory, and at one point he even believes he may be the son of Deckard himself. He's incredibly conflicted at the task of retiring the daughter, perhaps more so than Deckard ever was in the original, but having to retire the replicants he was tracking down, and he has a real deep connection and relationship with an AI assistant, Joy, which really shares many of the themes the original touched upon. Now, as I say, it's hot on his trail throughout as the character of Love, played by the wonderful Sylvia Hoykes. I've not really got a favourite performance in this film, but if I did, then I'd probably choose Sylvia Hoykes because I thought she was a great villain in the story. And she really stole the limelight away from Jared Leto's character, who was shockingly underused. But once we do finally meet Deckard in this film, um, and it's not at all around the hour mark, it'd be fair to say he's not in the best of moods. He's certainly not in any moods for answering questions about his past. And there's a really great scene involving him and Kay fighting in a room with a holographic Elvis playing on a stage, singing Suspicious Minds, and that was a fantastic scene that I thoroughly loved. Deckard's then snatched away by love, and Kay is easily bested by a villain which quite frankly harkened up memories of the T-1000 from Terminator 2, but in a good way. Um, and his AI lover is terminated at this point as well. And now, without spoiling the story, because it's really the essence of watching this is watching it and discovering these things for yourself. Kay makes a discovery about the identity of a child and goes off to save Deckard. And I'd love to discuss every individual scene in this but I really can't because it's close to three hours long and that would be pretty much impossible. But needless to say I thought the ending was intelligently handled and uh, satisfactory. Although, spoiler alert, I was slightly disappointed at the manner and the way in which love met her demise. Um, ultimately I still prefer the original which I think imbued its characters with slightly more emotion and soul um, than this iteration did, but Gosling was fantastic. Hoyts as I mentioned was probably the standout and Ford was superb too in his return to the character of Deckard. And you know, um, he brought some useful energy to the film which really belied his elderly age. 
visually the film is probably the most beautiful I've ever seen. Um, I've not seen a film portray such an expansive, epic feeling and sense of scale in the way this film did, using incredible wide shots throughout. Um, the one that always sticks in my mind is the shot of Kay flying past Dam as he heads out on his mission. And obviously the crash which falls after that was stunning as well. I really do believe that it's time for Roger Deakin to finally collect an Oscar. It's a crime against humanity that he hasn't won one yet and he really should win for this. Hans Zimmer is of course a composer and I'll say no more on that. I think the man's a genius um, and he, everything he touches is gold. Overall, I'm not sure if I can recommend the film to the average viewer. This is a film which really caters to the taste of a niche group, i.e. those who love the cult classic that is the original. Uh, the film won't be for everyone. Um, there is a few films on YouTube which help to bridge the gap between the two, and if you're not part of that niche group then I would strongly urge you to watch those because they really do help fill in some gaps and make the film all the more enjoyable. It's a great film however, and uh, there's some nice cerebral storytelling in there from a brilliant, brilliant director in Denis Vigonov, and uh, the visuals are amazing and the performances are really good as well. I would give it a 4.5 out of 5. Remember guys, if you're enjoying the content we're putting out, then be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes, and give us a little follow on Facebook at MovieBurner Entertainment and on Twitter at MovieBurners. You can also catch up with all the latest reviews we're putting out at the MovieBurner blog on MovieBurnerEntertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.